Hi, and welcome to the Examine Life. And today, what I'm going to be talking about is how healing from narcissistic abuse is like learning to become an expert bowler. What? <laughs> yeah, um, I know that seems a little bit odd, but before we get started, uh, please subscribe and click on the little bell down down next to your, next to the the subscribe button so that you can get notifications when I put up m new, more videos. And I'm just hoping to do more videos uh, more frequently, and I'm just having a hard time finding the time to do them. But anyways, let's get right into the topic. Okay, so how is it that you know how how did I come to the conclusion? or the idea that recovering from narcissistic abuse is a lot like um, learning to become an expert bowler. Well, let me explain. The first thing that both of these things have in common is that they're like onions in that they have layers. And when I initially and the thing is that initially when we when we come into the uh, the knowledge of that we've been abused by a narcissist or you know we've had PTSD or or things like that those those terms that keep coming up we are oblivious we're oblivious we're in denial we're caught up in cognitive dissonance you know that that there's more to what we're experiencing and we don't that's how that's how we became part of the flying monkey group and we wanted to stay a part of that flying monkey group but at the same time when the cognitive dissonance finally hit us and we realized that you know we're now the outsider because the narcissist put us on the outside and you know the smear campaign and the the discard and all that business you know, all of a sudden that was a wake up call to us to wake up to the fact that there's more, there was more to all of it than what we thought it was. And when I decided, I, I kind of stumbled actually, it's really kind of, it, it's a little bit of based on fate, F A T E, fate, on how I got involved with bowling. And how the activity in itself, why I chose to do the activity and started to get into it was because I needed to go, I needed to get on with my life and do things, go out and do things and not just sit and wallow in misery and, and you know, worry about somebody who is never going to come around, you know, they're never going to come around. And that's in terms of seeing things differently because they they're kings in their little world and the people who are their subjects their little flying monkeys prop them up you know they, unless unless a king has subjects then they're, they're not really a king except they're and they're just a bunch of delusional people and who think they have power and really they only have the power that we give them and when you realize and you start to wake up to the fact that you're throwing your energy and your time down a lane <laughs> that um, is just absorbing you and it will never really give you anything in return. And, you know, I kind of had to come to that term, that terms, those terms myself. Now, the bowling, how it comes into it is that, as I said, my objective was to move in a different direction and just do something that was pleasurable. And, you know, of all of the activities that I had done in my life, I, I didn't do, I hadn't done bowling since I was a kid. And a lot of people just kind of think, it, they dismiss it and you know, as some kind of, you know, oh, well, we'll just go down the bowling alley and grab some balls and throw them down the lane and see how things go, right? You hope for the best. You throw it down the lane and then you hope for the best. Well, the interesting thing was when I initially decided to go bowling, it was the same idea, you know. I was oblivious to what goes really into um, how people become pro bowlers. 
you know, I'm thinking, how does a person become pro-bowler and why would they want to? And so, but I, so I didn't put a lot of thought into it. And a lot of, and that kind of is like the beginning of when you're in the relationship with, or, or how should I say, coming out of the relationship with the narcissist. And you're just totally oblivious that, you know, we, that you've just been put through the ringer and that you possibly have PTSD or P- CPTSD, which is a complex uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, and, and you're not, you, you don't know anything about any of this. You just know that you've been discarded. You have a heartbroken heart and, and you know, you've been, you possibly your reputation has been destroyed by, the, by this person. And you're just oblivious and you're sort of kicked out into the street and uh, what do you go from there, right? So <laughs> one day, me and this friend of mine, we, uh, she's, we, I told her, I, you know, I, I want to go bowling. I just had this little hankering to go bowling and because I hadn't done it for so many years. And when I, I did it when I was a kid and I didn't have any negativity about the whole experience. I never had any problem with bowling. It was a lot of fun when I did it when I was a kid. So, um, I, you know, I had a good association with it in that regard, but I didn't know a lot about the sport and so my, my understanding is you go to the bowling alley, you find a ball there, and you throw it down the lane, right? Knock over some pins, and you're good to go. Well, so that's what I did. We went, we went, to, we went to the bowling alley. I, I, was, I walked in, and I saw a whole bunch of these, these um, what do they call it, house balls. And they're basically... Um, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if they're just urethane balls or if they're plastic. They, they could be one or the other. But the, the more modern bowling alleys have color-coding balls, meaning that all the balls that are like, say, 13 pounds are blue, 14 pounds are dark purple, you know, 10-pound balls are maybe red, that kind of thing. So it's a more color-coded. But, you know, I felt in the middle, like a 10-pound ball would be appropriate for myself. So I kind of searched around for an 11 and 10 pound balls but the problem was that now that I'm an adult and sort of on the heavy side actually my fingers are actually kind of big so finding a ball that I could lift easily and have my fingers appropriately fit the ball was a challenge so I had to go I went from every ball to finally I realized oh all the red balls are 10 pounds so those are the the best ones right but I couldn't find any ones that were that would fit my fingers properly so I ended up having to do a a 12 pound ball which was too heavy for me but I you know hey you know you you settle for what you have and what you can do based on the conditions that you're in right so I get I, I get this 12 pound ball and I start bowling with it and it's really very hard to control I mean, I didn't realize, you know, that just a pound or two could really make that much of a difference, but it really does. And um, so I, I did my best, though, trying to get that ball down the lane. And I did okay the first time. It wasn't, I didn't, you know, it definitely didn't break 100, but um, I struggled. A lot of it went into the gutter. And, but I knew, I already knew that it didn't, the ball itself didn't feel right. And I didn't really have any choices. So I ended up settling. And then I kind of realized, you know, in retrospect, I was like, that's exactly, um, that's kind of exactly how I ended up being in a relationship because I settled for somebody who was just there and you know, we, we shared some values, but I, they were very controlling. And it was very un, um, very unhappy after a while. Initially, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of love bombing and then break up and make up and break up and make up, that kind of thing. So I was being traumatized and, and with the push-pull, as they think they, I think they call it. So they push you away and then they pull you back, you know, the hoovering and all that business. 
but I didn't, of course, I didn't know the names of all of these techniques that the narcissists use until later on when I did my thing, but I didn't realize I was being repeatedly traumatized by this person. But anyways, in that sense, realizing that the ball that I was using was not necessarily the best fit for me, but I had to use it in the house because it was a house ball because I might because my fingers were so big but it wasn't the right ball for me and I wasn't going to get any I wasn't going to get any better by using a ball that wasn't necessarily you know the, uh, the that wasn't appropriate for me so anyways you know, that's what people do and but I looked over what happened was this what happened was I looked over to another lane and I saw a man there and he traditional black ball and he bowled and the ball, the end of the lane, just before it hit the pins, it actually turned. It hooked. It had a hook on it at the very end, and it crashed in those, into those pins, and it, he made strike after strike. And I was like, wow, this guy's really good. So and my, perce- my perception changed right there because if, I, it was just, if it was just me and my friend playing bowling, there wouldn't have been any outside comparison to anything else. I Meaning, I would have been I would have been oblivious because there was nothing better to compare it to until I saw the other guy on the other lane. And then I realized there was something that I wasn't doing right, or you know, I, I mean, in other words, I knew that I could definitely improve. It wasn't just the score, but there was definitely a way to do it. Hmm. So. I went home, I looked at some videos, and I, when I saw the kind of videos that were out there in terms of bowling, I was, I was overwhelmed. And it was kind of the same feeling I had when I discovered I, w- I, had to, I was suffering from narcissistic abuse and PTSD and all of that. And there was just all these videos out there about different things, about different aspects of things, and um, that narcissists do, and I, 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 I would spend hours just watching these videos, you know, trying to get my bearings and saying, hey, yeah, that sounds familiar. I, I mean, you know, that that's what my narcissist used to do, kind of a thing. And, but it led me to seek knowledge. So in, a, in, a, in essence, th- it was the same deal. So wanting to become a better bowler led me to seek the knowledge that I needed to become a better bowler, to improve, to self-help, for lack of a better way to put it. And same thing with healing from narcissistic abuse. You know, we seek that out online because we were, we're looking for to be re- affirmed that what we went through, you know, other people are going through this too. Wow. You know, but at the same time, we're also seeking the knowledge of, of getting our bearings as to what we went through. So in that regard, you know, I started to make this little comparison within myself. I think, oh, I'm, I feel like I'm going back to the square one again, you know, in healing. But this time I'm doing it to improve my bowling. Interesting. But it was the same process, you know. Um. So as I looked into more into the bowling process of how they get, how they do what they do and how did you get, you know, how do you learn how to do all those multiple strikes and get, get perfect games and such. And, you know, it's like, it was like opening a can of worms. Because same thing with understanding narcissistic abuse. It's like opening a can of worms. I mean, there's just so much stuff that you need to shift your paradigm and you know, open your mind to the fact that some people are capable of doing negative things. And why would they do it? Maybe they just do it because it's, that's who they are. You know, to fathom that. So we're in the same situation. I was in the same situation with the bowling, you know. And anyways, so I thought, well, if I'm going to take 
after I saw all these videos, I didn't go really that deep into it, but I just definitely, I definitely knew after watching some videos that I needed to get, if I was going to take it seriously, I needed to get a proper equipment and those house balls weren't going to do it. So I, um, went down to, I didn't, wasn't, but at the same time, I didn't, wasn't going to spend, you know, bowling balls can be pretty expensive, but I didn't know, um, you know, well, how do I buy a bowling ball? What, I'm sure, I'm surely the ones that the pros use are very expensive and there's something, must be something about them that, you know, that's unique, right? So I went down to the Salvation Army and this is where fate kind of comes in because I found this ball I was just uh, looking, I just walked, waltzed in there and I was looking for specifically for a ball, you know, and there was this cute little purple ball and it fit my fingers perfectly and it was the perfect weight. It was like a 10 pound ball and had, and the fingers fit my hand perfectly and I was so excited and I, you know, I just did a little, uh, I swung the ball in the store like you know I was about to roll it just to get a feel for it and I said wow this is perfect this is the perfect weight and the fingers are just perfect wow and it came with its own little bag and everything see this is this is the ball right here and and um, the bag is here is here too and and the best thing about it was it was um they were having a 50 percent sale 50 percent off sale so the ball it's, and the bag together was like $8. And so when I took it to the cashier, they said, oh, we have 50% off today on everything. So I got it for 4 For $4, I got a bag and a ball. So that was kind of like fate in, in the sense that somebody out there who owned this ball, probably a woman, you know, um, decided to give up on bowling. And so it led to her giving the ball up so that I could get it. So I kind of took that, you know, I could get it at the price that was right for me. And everything about that whole situation was just perfect. It was like a little romance. <laughs> you know? It was like it was the perfect size ball, perfect weight, the fingers fit, it came with a little bag, perfect price, you know. So I took it home and I, and I, I decided Oh, well, I was all excited. And so I took the ball. I mean, my friend, we, just, we went, I took, I said, hey, I got this ball. And she's like, and she, she was so excited, so excited with me and everything. And we took this little ball and down to the, the bowling alley. And my game improved immediately because it was the right size, the right weight, and it was the right finger size. My game improved and, you know off the charts compared to what I was before the first time. And it kind of gave me a little epiphany right there was that if you're going to take it seriously and start looking at stuff, you know, you need to find stuff that suits you and understand your own self and your own limitations. Meaning that my own limitation was that I could only really lift or swing a, a 10 pound ball effectively. Not an 11 pound ball, not a 12 pound ball, but a 10 pound ball. And a nine pound ball would be, be, would be too light. But I knew what my limitation was. And that self-awareness was where, is part of the learning and the growing when you're in narcissistic abuse, meaning understanding your own boundaries and your own limitations of what you can do. So um, that was really the fact that, it, you know, everything kind of aligned itself for me in that little ball to meet. And somebody else had to let go of that ball for, for me to get, in, for me to bring it into my world. So, so it, it was rejected in one world, but it came in, it was welcomed in mine. So I was trying to, again, I, was, I took it to the bowling alley. I, my, my score definitely improved. Um, but at the same time, I was still, you know, fascinated 
with those guys who come in with the and they and some of these people who who are serious bowlers they come in with these bags full of b- different balls and I'm like why do you need so many balls <laughs> I get it why got this guy got five balls and I didn't understand why I thought well I only got one ball in my game um why do you, why did they need so many balls I didn't understand that uh, I just want to I want to just bring a little closure to for this portion of this story. Um, right now, increased, I've, been, I've actually doubled from when, from that first time when I used the ball, I got a feel for that ball um, to where I've increased my, I've, I've, I've quadrupled, I guess you could say, my ability at the scoring. Now, I'm not in bowling perfect games, not at all, but I've definitely improved maximum from what I was the first time with a ball that didn't fit me so a little match made in heaven and um as I said I would like to share with my 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 little journey about bowling and how it helped me it's definitely still helping me in terms of getting self-awareness and moving and creating new memories and new experiences beyond the narcissist you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be if if you if you're into some kind of hobby or or craft or whatever, that's something that's special to you, you know, use that as a way of moving away from the narcissist and, and, and building and bringing joy into your life. And that was something that was really um, important in terms of. The experience of bowling, whether I did it right or whether whether I didn't do it right, was there was a little bit of frustration in it, you know, initially because I wasn't doing it well. But when I started to do it better and improve, I got more confident and it built, you know, it definitely helped my self-esteem because I under- started to understand what my limitations were. I understood what I needed in terms of equipment and I learned how to take care of my equipment, you know, by buying a little cleaner for the ball and a little special little rag or, you know, a little towel to to wipe off the oil from the ball. Um, But I'm taking, I took care, I'm taking care of the equipment as I'm learning to take care of myself. Taking care of the ball is a way of taking care of myself in a sense that I'm doing a activity that is pleasurable to myself and it brings me happiness and to be able to feel that happiness is something that the narcissist is never never or wants you to do the narcissist doesn't want you to be happy that's why you should do it that's why you should do this activity because in defiance of those people those narcissists who are who don't want you to be happy who want to control you You know, this let this activity that you might enjoy lead you away from them and put your energy into something that will give back to you. Because the bowling is actually giving, even though it's just, you know, some pins in a ball, it's actually quite giving me, giving back to me in a sense of being a very pleasurable experience in terms of growth and understanding. So, um, I, I thank you for listening, by the way, and thank you for subscribing. And I would like, um, if you are, you know, definitely interested in hearing further on my little journey with the bowling, and, and as well as I will be doing some other videos, uh, please subscribe and click on the little bell so you get notifications when I uh, do some more videos. And I'm ho- again, I'm hoping to uh, do more more videos more frequently i'm just need to get to find the time to do them and i just want to thank all my new subscribers who have recently joined my channel and um yeah i i just wanted to do something i i want to do something a little bit different than a lot of what are the other people who are talking about narcissism out there you know um it's all well and good to learn about those little intricacies in terms of the vocabulary and the and those you know the 
the flying monkeys and the smear campaign and all that. It's, it's all well and good to learn that because it's a very important pieces as we put the, the puzzles together in our heads. But it's also very important to take care of ourselves and physically going out and doing something that fits you is very, very important. And I wanted to, to share that journey with you here with that what I'm doing for myself and I encourage you to go out and do something that fits you all right so thanks for listening again and this has been the examine life and I look forward to talking to you in another video all right adios